What happens when law, business, and life collide? Each week on Lead Council, your host Tom Tona will take a deep dive into topics related to the law, the business of law, and life. There will be insightful discussions with industry insiders, experts, and thought leaders making significant contributions and meaningful differences in their fields of expertise. Tom is the founder and managing attorney at Tona Law. He has been a practicing attorney since 1994 and the leader of Tona Law since it opened in 2001. The goal of this podcast is to provide you with free information on law and the business of law and to give you actionable tools related to each of these areas. Now, here's Tom. Welcome to the Lead Council Podcast. This is your host, Tom Tone. I'm here with Jules. What's going on? Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Today's episode is why should EOS come with a warning label? So I'm going to interview you, Jules. Interview me? Yeah. Before I jump into why I think it should come with a warning label, from your perspective, is there anything about EOS that has made you in the last whatever it's been that you've been exposed to it now? What has it been like? Six months? Eight months? Oh, no. Nine months? Ten months? Uh, less than that. Right. I've been on it less. Okay. Okay. So probably closer to six. Is there anything that has personally made you uncomfortable as a team member of Tona Law with the exposure you've had to EOS? I think that EOS comes with a very strict, and I want to say like kind of like rigid setup, right? Right. So I think from experience over the past couple months, like obviously EOS has been a lot of behind the scenes. We haven't rolled it out to the full team yet. But I think even though we've been working on the behind the scenes and technically haven't brought it to the full team yet, it still has had, it's like, it still has changed a lot of things in the firm, I feel, I think. I think that one, just the, clarification on the vision and what it is. And it's like either, you know, you're working towards that vision or you kind of have no place here, to be honest, in like a kinder way, I guess, to say that. And then I think that it's interesting because EOS lays out all of the data like for you right there in your face. And it forces you to reevaluate and look at it every week. And you could be doing work every week, but if the data is and the numbers aren't changing, then it's like you're kind of running in place. So it's definitely been an interesting experience seeing how you have to be really intentional with your work and intentional with what you're putting your energy into to get those numbers moving in the direction that you want to see them in. That's brilliant. I think that's really insightful. So I think it's a good way to start, right? Mm -hmm. The whole episode because I kept joking around on LinkedIn and then I was joking around with our EOS implementer, Mitch, who I went to lunch with yesterday. And he's like Yoda, man. He says stuff and it's like, oh, he's got his thumb on the pulse of of everything going on. And he Mm -hmm. made some really insightful feedback at the lunch. So the transformative power of EOS is uncomfortable. Right. Yeah. And, and I, I think it's uncomfortable for a couple of reasons. It, it's uncomfortable because it creates accountability in every seat. Mm-hmm. It's uncomfortable because the data doesn't lie. So when you see red or not done or worse, never going to be done type of things, mm-hmm. you can't now not know what that is telling you. Mm-hmm. Right. So. If one revenue silo is off, it's red. It's red for a couple of weeks. What's that telling us? There's an issue. Mm -hmm. And then those issues get discussed. What I, one of the things I love about EOS and that we'll backtrack and fill in people who don't know what EOS is, but one of the things I love about it is it's simplicity, right? And it removes all emotionality. Like if you and I have to have a conversation or I have to have a conversation with somebody, it, it, in a lot of companies, and I call use that term loosely because they're maybe smaller law firms or, you know, two or three people in there, it's always heightened emotions. Either the leader's hyper-emotional or they get in hyper-emotional conversations and EOS just breeds professionalism. 
-hmm. right? If I talk about the data with somebody, the data is telling a story that I then need to explain to somebody, right? Mm -hmm. So let's start with what is EOS? EOS is the entrepreneurial operating system based on the book Traction by Gino Wickman. I think it's brilliant. And it's brilliant in both its simplicity and its effectiveness. And, but it should definitely come with a warning label Mm -hmm. because even me, I've got the highest pain threshold. I mean, you're talking about somebody who for a hobby would be strangled by his friends and strangle his friends in jujitsu. And before that, be punched in the face in karate and, and all different martial arts and has had multiple surgeries on every joint. And you can see in the upper left-hand corner of the screen, my, my black belt that I had framed because I finally achieved a lifelong dream in one of the hardest martial arts you can. So as somebody who has a high pain adaptability and threshold, I find traction really painful at times. <laughs> and that's why I, I had the, that was the inspiration behind the motivation for this podcast because I kept joking around about it, but I meant it. Mm -hmm. It really should have a warning label and the warning label we'll get into later of what it should look like, right? So what is, what is EOS? So EOS has, it's a system that has six components and we'll talk about each one in brief and then kind of talk about our exposure to it in the first 12 months. So it's vision, people, data, issues, process, and traction, right? And we we haven't done all of these, but because I read the book, I have an inherent understanding of where we're going over the next 12 months. First component, vision. I've always had a vision for the business, but I got, like you said, crystal clear on each of the three silos, revenue goals, uh, operational goals, and what I want that to be. Mm -hmm. And what ends up happening is then you have to analyze each and every seat in there and say, okay, the goal, let's pick personal injury, is to be a personal injury trial firm without it being me that does the trials anymore, Mm -hmm. right? Because as the CEO of the firm, we've got almost 40 people now and it's physically impossible for me to be that guy. Now we have a trial hitter who will be announcing over the next couple of weeks that that is is on board on our team. And he's a major trial attorney. That's in line with my vision. So now I have litigation attorneys that handle the litigation. I have trial piece sewn up and we have a killer team of all paralegals, legal assistants, intake people, and a settlement negotiator in our personal injury department. So the vision piece led to the people analysis piece and what we needed to add to the team, right? So that the data should look much different in the next 12 months. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's also a matter of like sharing that vision. Because I think as the visionary, it's easy. Like you clearly see it in your head. You clearly know what exactly it is that you want. Right. But now it's a matter of EOS really forces you to explain that to your team and put everybody on the same page. And I think maybe before EOS was implemented, like I think you and Janira have always been on the same page, I would say. But, you know, you had to sit and really explain it over and over again to the rest of the leadership and then eventually the whole firm is going to be on the same page. Yes. And and the the frustrating part of the EOS rollout and uh, the frustrating part of EOS in general that should be on the warning label, warning number one should be, You can't roll this out to your team until your leadership team have a in-depth understanding. You prepare for a rollout at length, repeatedly, and so you have it down pat so your explanation is clear. Mm -hmm. So I was kind of surprised. They they made us wait almost a year for the rollout, right? So that'll be happening hopefully in January, and I'm excited about it. Because I know that people have felt the effects of EOS now because we have been so rapid in implementation, mm-hmm. right? So the, that covers the vision and the people piece. Then there's the data, which you talked about. And the data is the key performance indicators for any business. And we have probably 10 or 12 data points right now that will be crystallizing next year even further. 
right? I'm going to a seminar that uh, a good friend of mine, Craig Goldenfarb, is hosting at his office, John Fisher's Mastermind. And well, I'm going to be drilling down on my data mm -hmm. and my people and all of these things in a different setting completely. But a lot of the people there do EOS and they're a group of my peers of law firm owners. So the next thing that they do is they, one of the six components is they teach you to identify, discuss, and solve issues. So we did a meeting yesterday. We had like a 75% solve rate, right? We have short-term issues, long-term issues. What I love about the framework is that they teach you in how to hold a level 10 meeting where you discuss all of these things. And the level 10 meeting so effective is the hour-long discussion on identifying issues, discussing issues, and solving issues. And we crush this, this, this portion of it, right? We mm -hmm. just do. And it's because we have tough conversations. But they're not emotional. And even if they get emotional, it's, hey, this is not, this is just an issue. Mm -hmm. It's not even a problem. And they're not negative. They're not positive. They're just issues. Yeah. That's it. Every business has them. Every business, everybody has them. Everybody has them. The problem is, is they don't teach you this shit in law school. Mm -mm. So like the law firms that ain't doing EOS, well, you got an issue. Yeah. That's an issue. And if you don't have the framework, you're likely, okay, so let's take a back step. We weren't always at the level of sophistication we have now, mm -hmm. right? This is a growth process. So the decision to even do EOS is a significant decision. It's widely known how much it costs. It's a $35,000 a year investment. I made the decision at a point where our growth could afford that expenditure because it ain't cheap, but that investment is completely worth it. I mean, what we're positioned for next year is insane and it's all EOS related. So what is great about EOS is there's a barrier to entry that you, you will have to have already arrived at a certain place before you will even, A, be able to afford that kind of investment, and B, in order to be able to afford it, you have to have some level of sophistication, right? Like that's a major investment. So, it, but it works, right? And what ends up happening, and in all candor, I wasn't good at holding meetings before this. I was awful at it. Now we have a meeting cadence once a week, 90 minutes, and then each department will have that also coming next year when we roll out EOS, right? There will be a 90 minute or a 60 to 90 minute meeting that follows that L10 structure where you're discussing issues in marketing. They're discussing issues in HR and finance and then it blends upward into the leadership meeting mm -hmm. every week, right? So you got vision, people, data, issues, and then process. So one of the things we've always thrived on is having systems slash processes for every single thing in the law firm. Now, as we spot issues, we create processes and systems to deal with those issues. And then you have traction where all of these things are clicking at once. And I could tell you that I'm already seeing this and we're only 50% of the way there, but it, the growth is not easy. So anybody that's doing this, the other level of EOS warning should be, beware, you're going to grow and growth is painful. And it comes fast. And it comes lightning fast. And not everybody likes it. So what got you to one point, somebody might not be comfortable with. And if they want to stay the same, they're not going to stay. Mm -hmm. And I've seen this with other coaching programs. There's always positive turnover when new things happen in a business. Now, that being said, I'm praying nobody on my, my team is looking to exit because of EOS. Mm -hmm. We've had some already that have exited yeah. because of EOS in the last year. And I'm okay with that because it's what's best for them and it's what's best for us. Mm -hmm. And it, it's not a personal thing because the business needs what the business needs, right? That's yeah. what EOS shows you is that the business has needs that are greater than the individual. And so if the group of individuals are being served by the business and the business is serving the group of individuals, then it works. 
but there are going to be people, and that's one of the uncomfortable parts is that change that nobody likes is somebody might say, hey, I'm tapping out, man. I don't want to be part of this vision. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's fair. And that's okay. Mm-hmm. And it's not personal to them. I don't take it personally, mm-hmm. right? So strengthening the vision component means getting everybody in the organization 100% on the same page where you're going and how you're going to get there. And like I said, that's the initial evaluation. And if people say, well, this is not for me, and it's not speaking to them anymore, then that is just what it is. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean it's not painful if people have been with you and you you have a connection with those people. You know what I mean? So the people component of traction, to me, is one of the more important things to me because... I'm such a big believer in culture. Mm -hmm. But what I love is my philosophy has always been uh, love your people, demand excellence. And what happens with EOS is it creates high level accountability. Yeah. Every seat, there's no hiding. There is a number every seat gets assigned as far as what they're responsible for in terms of production and output and all of these things. And we're not talking about micromanagement. I can look at my 10 KPIs and know damn well if performance is off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Couple that with the technology we're launching Smart Advocate and every seat having their key performance indicator metrics, you know. The numbers don't lie. So anyway, so you can't do it without great people. I think we have a fantastic team and it means surrounding yourself with great people, all great people that you want to work with every day. And you can't achieve the vision. And the visions that we have are great and big and audacious. And you can't achieve those without the great team. So now data, and and I'm a numbers guy, and I love the data side, right? So the data component means cutting through all the bullshit, you know, feelings, personalities, opinions, egos. It don't matter. It boils down to the organization achieving a handful of objective numbers or not. And that those numbers give you a pulse on where things are every second of every day. And that data doesn't lie. Mm-hmm. It's one of my favorite sayings. And so if I give you a key performance metric, and I think I've done this with every, actually everything you do, believe it or not, like we've said, okay, one of your goals is the newsletter. You got to get out for a year, mm-hmm. right? Our first one coming out next week. Right. And, and if you don't get one of those out on time, you're off. You're off. That number will be read, right? Yeah. And we're going to create these different goals for you. Yep. But what that also allows me to do is attach success to those things. It also, it's not a penalty thing. It becomes a, hey, Jules, it's a conversation at first. Why is this number off? How did we miss this? What happened? right? Mm -hmm. And you might be like, well, you weren't available to me to review the digital newsletter on the first two weeks of August you were away. And you always have me reporting to you. And But what that does is signals to me, maybe I'm failing in the silo. You get that? You see the way that trips up? Yeah. I think we've really seen that play out over the past couple months, especially. Busier I get, Mm -hmm. if marketing, if, if the numbers start uh, indicating, if the numbers start indicating something's off, I'm not like, hey, Jules, you're failing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, of course. You know, Have I ever said that to you? You know I've never said that to no. you, right? Yeah. That doesn't mean I'm easy on you and it doesn't mean I won't call you out on bullshit if I need to. But, yeah. but if I see red, it allows me to have a conversation and say, hey, Jules, why is this number red? And it's been red for three weeks. What's going on? We need mm-hmm. to dissect it. We need, And it becomes an issue if it's more than two, three weeks on in an, in a you know an an indicator that it needs to be talked about. So then you have process, which to me is has always been like the secret ingredient in an organization. Systematizing the business by identifying and documenting the core processes that, that define the tone of law way of running tone of law. Mm-hmm. Right. You get everybody on the same page with what the essential procedural steps are, and then you get everybody to follow them consistently, and that lends to scalability in your organization, right? We have two people in two separate silos that are going to be going out on maternity leave. 
We're going to hire two people to fill in for them and then keep those two people as part of the permanent team, even when those other two team members return. Mm -hmm. And we will have our systems to teach these people that are coming in and they will do the same thing the same way in their positions. Yep. And that's what allows for scalability. Now we're poised for really explosive growth in all silos. Yeah, and I don't think we ever had an issue with processes, but a little warning, if you are one of those people who do not have set systems in place and everybody just does it based on how they feel or whatnot, the EOS is going to smack that out of you. So. If you... Well, first of all, what I love about EOS, there's no version two, version three. It was written 11 years ago, mm, right? And going, going, going on 12 years, right? So what I love about Traction is that for 12 years, there's only been one EOS system. From my understanding, there will never be a version two a version three, an internet digital version, traction's going to stay traction because it works. $100 million companies run on it. So it's going to be good enough for my little law firm. And there's my no deep... law firm. <laughs> and, and, you know, you, you said a word earlier, it's rigid. Mm -hmm. That's what I like about it. There is yeah. no, oh, we'll do these things this way according to traction and EOS, but we'll do this other thing the way we want. No. You do everything the EOS way. It's out of the box. It works. It's a proven system. But you have to follow the entire system or you're going to limp along. You're probably not going to finish it. So that's what I love about it. So John Morgan was talking, and I forget where I heard John Morgan of Morgan & Morgan speak. And he's always a polarizing name. I don't know why. A lot of attorneys, I think, are coming from a place of insecurity. And John Morgan is not insecure. John Morgan is very confident. He's a mm -hmm. gazillionaire. He owns banks. He owns entertainment venues. He's brilliant. He's a brilliant business guy. His marketing is brilliant. And he said he implemented a top-down accountability system. It might have been EOS. It might have been another one because there's other ones out there. Vern Harnish has one called Scaling Up. But he implemented this because he realized he had attorneys that were lawyering different ways on different files. And he had, you know, team members doing it. You know, he's in 50 states right now. So you yeah. can't have anything deviating from their system. So that standardization and processes, it's just good business. And law firms are like any other business. If you think... You don't need to be uniform in the way you litigate your cases or the way you do estate planning. You're wrong. Mm -hmm. It is what it is. If you're doing EOS, the last component is traction. And it's my favorite part because it brings discipline and accountability into an organization that becomes great at execution. And each, each individual becomes great at execution. And it takes the vision to the ground level and makes it real for everybody. Everybody now understands what they're working towards. So, I mean, we, man, you talk about a power, powerful system. That's EOS. Mm -hmm. So, and what it does is it, if you're like me, and I, and I recommend anybody listening to this, evaluate how you think about thinking. What does that mean? Are you a slow decision maker? Are you a fast decision maker? Are you Confident? Are you fearful? You got to really know yourself, right? I come back. I, I knew because I've done this before with other, you know, changes in the organization. I am a rapid decision maker and I am a instant implementer. Mm -hmm. I wasn't going to spend this kind of money on a system. I was not going to implement immediately and fully across the organization. And I didn't think about the pain points because I was like, well, I've been down this road a gazillion times and I'm fairly sophisticated. And holy shit, it, I, I don't know what made me think it was going to be easier than any other time I've done it. And it wasn't. And in fact, it's probably the most difficult. Especially because the level that you're at now versus like, you know, when you started Atticus or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when, you, when I started that other coaching program, Atticus, I knew nothing. I knew nothing. I had read a book called E-Myth, E-Myth Revisited. 
And I was From like- Michael Gerber, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you ever read that? You ever read it? No, but I remember, you talk about it all the time. Oh, it's a great book. And it's about running your business like a business versus a job, Mm-mm. right? If, you, you know, anybody that goes out on their own initially starts out, it's just another job. You work for somebody else. It's not nearly as secure. You got to be okay with that risk. And, but then at some point you make the decision, do you want more? Or do you want to just basically grind out a job because you're limited at 40 hours a week or 50 hours a week that you can put in before you fall asleep, whether you want to fall asleep or not, you're going to sleep. The decision to grow it into a business is you're going to rely on leveraging other people's skill, talent, and time to build it where they do what they do best to allow you to do what you do best, right? So I joined that other organization and yeah, it was pain, right? They should tell you when you join any organization and follow any new system, there's going to be positive turnover, mm-hmm. right? Every coaching organization should come with that kind of warning label. So what, what's awesome about EOS is after a decade of corporate transformation already and advanced thought processes and higher level training, EOS is putting that on rocket fuel. Mm -hmm. And I see EOS transformations in every single silo right now. Yeah. Right? In every single silo. And it's not easy. And I know that a lot of people don't even understand what's going on. They just see the changes. But that's what the rollout's going to do. Right? That's where the importance of the rollout is. So the rapid changes and then the clarity that comes with EOS is brought on by the vision and the direction the firm is going in. So like the vision and the core values drive everything. And so if I'm interviewing somebody for my personal injury silo now, right, we have our litigation attorneys set that will do everything from the beginning up to trial. But now when we hire new attorneys, coming in as we grow, they have to be willing to try cases. Second chair or first chair, <clears throat> because 10% of our inventory is going to trial every year. I got a formula from a friend of mine who also does EOS. And the formula was really simple. 10% of your cases are never going to settle. You make that decision. You tell the clients, look, this case is, is high value and the carrier will never do this without a trial, at least starting and getting on the way before they'll tend to the policy, right? So you get a lot of this clarity too by talking to people that are doing the same things. Mm -hmm. EOS is a network of people across the country. They have a big conference that I'm going to in April. It's a worldwide conference. People fly in from all over. It's in San Diego. I'm going with Janir, my integrator, right? Yep. So The last part of the podcast is why should it come with a warning level, right? So the challenges, you have to know yourself as a leader and be humble because you're going to get humbled about different ways of doing things. The challenges are also in the fact that you have a connection to your people, but you have to remove emotionality from it and say, well, we're, the business needs this to accomplish this vision. I've had people that are no longer here say, well, if you're looking to execute on the vision you have, then we need this in terms of a new hire, right? And that mm-hmm. is a trial person, right? I, I, and remarkably, I got trials set coming up first quarter already. Yeah. and. We ain't settling those cases. We are not settling those cases. If any... That would not be in alignment with the vision. No. And if any of the adjusters are listening, (laughs) that's all I got to say. So resistance is another thing that should be on the warning label. There are people that hate change and they don't want more growth. They don't want expansiveness of an organization or their department or their seat. And that's okay. That doesn't mean they won't have a role here. We've had people say, listen, I appreciate you asking me if I want to acquire more skills right now that you're willing to pay for. But right now my focus is on something else. And that's okay. That doesn't diminish their value. Mm -hmm. I may just have to look at how do I get the skills that are needed to supplement that department, 
-hmm. That doesn't mean somebody who's been with me a long time is going to be asked to leave. It just means... It's a redirection. It's a redirection of what I then have to bring into the firm. Mm -hmm. What you're near, really. So, so that resistance is something that gets discussed. We talk about it. And the implementation process, it's not easy, right? There's a, a term called ROCKS that are basically 90-day goals that feed towards the larger goals that we've set for the year. A lot of people use that cadence, right? Atticus used to do it. We did a 90-day planner. What I love about the way EOS does it is, one, I don't have any rocks. It's my vision we're executing on. I have a thousand things to do during any given day of the, as the visionary of the firm, but everybody on the team has rocks. And everybody on the team, once it's rolled out, will have their own rocks. Mm -hmm. That could be case-related. This case should be closed this year. This case should be at trial and tried this year. And then they're all rowing in the same direction towards the bigger vision, right? So there are fallouts from these pain points, but they're almost, they've exclusively been positive, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Somebody says, this is no longer for me. We say, we wish you the best of luck. They're going to find what they're looking for. We're going to have positive turnover. So that's it. Any questions, Jules? I do. I have a couple. So yeah, when ahead. did you fully start EOS? We started in January of this year. So it's coming on to a full year. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I was, I get up every day at 4 or 4.30 and New Year's Eve is no exception because I don't drink. And I go to bed early because I'm a wet blanket that way as my wife is fond of telling me, my <laughs> daughter is fond of telling me, and so are you and half the people here. But I get up at four o'clock and I wrote down a, a notebook of plans in three hours of where I wanted this firm to go. And one of the key non-negotiables was I needed an operating system, mm -hmm. whether it was traction. There are a few other, other ones out there that I'll name Fireproof by Mike Morris, and then there's a, which is traction for law firms. That's what they're selling. And then there was there's another one that's done by a group Point Northeast or Northeast Point Northeast. They're a coaching organization, and it's a modified EOS because some people want modified or highly tailored. Mm -hmm. That's not my thing. I interviewed both organizations in addition to EOS and. For me, the out-of-the-box solution that gets kind of put down on the organization, I'm slamming my hands down if anybody can't see this, but it's a cookie-cutter solution that you press down the, the template and follow the template. That's my brain. That's how my brain works. They're all around the same price tag. Mm -hmm. If you want customization, EOS ain't it. You ain't customizing EOS. Yeah. If you want law-specific, I don't know the advantages because I know that Mike Morse, who founded the Morse Law Firm, was a client of Gino Wickman. So I don't know if he's got a, you know, a franchise agreement with them or whatever. But for me, I didn't even want something law specific. Because to me, I want something that works in any business of any size. Because I'm not looking to do what other law firms have done. I'm looking to be different. Thanks for listening to the Lee Council Podcast. You can find us wherever podcasts are distributed. And if you do, share it with your friends and leave us a five-star review and we're out. Thanks, yep. Jules. Thank you, everybody, for listening.